Welcome to Friday's Dueling Podcast, uh, uh, except for Mr. Excel is not here today. It's just XL is fun. Mr. Excel is actually on hiatus uh, until somewhere in February to finish all of his books he's writing about, Excel 2010. And then in February, he, he and I are going to get together and do some live dueling podcasts. So you guys will have to put up with just me today. Hey, here's the situation. We need to calculate end inventory value. And we are given sales purchases with the product name and the uh, quantity. This column is not needed because this particular transaction set um, only has product and sell price. Every single line already is quantity one sold. And this data set's pretty big. Oh, it's not pretty big. It's 63 rows. Uh, and we have a purchase uh, sheet. And this one has the uh, product name and then the actual quantity purchased and the price. So if we're going to do ultimately a weighted average cost of what all of these uh, product three, for example, cost, we're going to have to say 18 units times a price of 16 plus uh, 17 units for product three times this particular price. Both sheets are going to have to be used in calculating our ending inventory value. Now to calculate units purchased, we're going to have to do a sum if for function right here and use data from our purchase sheet. So I'm going to type equals sum if. And the range is the range over on the purchase sheet with, with all the product names. But watch this. To avoid the a problem with sheet references, because if I do a sheet reference for range and then hit comma and come back to the original sheet with the formula, if I put a cell reference in, it puts a sheet reference in which you don't need. So I'm going to type a comma and get my uh, relative cell reference from this sheet first. And then I'm going to click back in range right there and now go do my sheet references. To do a sheet reference, you click on the sheet. Click uh, on the cell. I'm going to click on that top cell. Control Shift down arrow and F4 to lock it. Now, if I click back up here, you can see that's the range. I'm going to click at the very end. That's the criteria. And I'm going to type a comma. And now the sum range is also a sheet reference. Quantity purchase, because we're counting how many uh, or adding up all the individual items we purchased. Control Shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. Now I'm going to close parentheses. Now notice my formula bar is looking big there in 2007, 10. You can always click and drag to see that. Control Enter to enter that formula, and then double click and send it down. Because there's stuff to the left, it goes and stops as soon as it sees a blank. Now units sold, since the transactional data set, every line equals a single unit sold, we don't have to use sum if. We can use count if. And whoops, equals count if. And I'm going to use my same trick instead of the range. First, I'm going to say criteria. Click right there. Close parentheses and click back in the argument. Now I go over to sales. I'm counting each one of these product names. Click on the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. Now I've finished my formula, so I Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now units left is easy. And in fact, I'm going to highlight the whole range and in the active cell at the top. Equal arrow, arrow to get my relative cell reference 2 to the left, minus arrow. And now to populate all of the cells with the formula, hold Control and tap Enter. There are our units left. Now what we have to calculate is our weighted average cost. Now we need product 1, 2, and 3. So our formula here, in essence, has to go over here and say, uh, look through all of here and find all the product ones, and say true. And then jump over to this column, get units times cost, and then units times cost. So that's multiplying two columns and then adding them. So we'll use sum product equals sum product. Now, the first array is going to be trues and falses, but trues and falses won't work for multiplying. You need ones and zeros. I'm going to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros with a double negative. Close, oh, open parentheses, and now we need our trues and falses. Is that product equal to anything over in our uh, 
first column in our purchase sheet. Control shift down arrow, F4. Now you can see the formula up here. Close parentheses, and then that's the screen tips helpful here. Comma, now the next array. Oh, we got all our trues and falses, so now we just need quantity purchased. Control shift down arrow, F4. Array 2 is complete, comma, and array 3. Control shift down arrow, F4, that's array 3. We close parentheses, and then control enter. So that formula right there will get us not our weighted average cost, but the total amount we paid for this particular product one. Now, if this is the total we paid, this is the number of units we purchased. Dividing the two will give us the weighted average cost. Divide by that relative cell reference, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now inventory value is simple, highlight all the cells, active cell at the top, Notice how I switched back and forth. Sometimes I do it this way and double click and send it down. Sometimes I do it this way. Both are uh, acceptable. This formula is, hey, however many units we have left, times the weighted average cost. Relative cell references, both of those. Control Enter to populate all of the cells with our formula. And there is our ending inventory value from two different sheets, a sales sheet and a purchase sheet. All right, um, we will see you next duel sometime in February for live duels from Seattle. All right, see you then.